Father's Day just passed, and in lieu of Father's Day, um, one of the things that me and Tia connected on, I mean, right off the bat, was the scenario surrounding both of our dads. I remember one time we were talking, and you were saying you felt like I was the first person, or the first dude that you had dated that had something to say about your dad situation. Yeah, so I mean, I guess I can go first since he segued into that. So essentially, my father, yeah, he wants it done. Ooh, Man, that was amazing. It was so and bad. I'm about to woe. Okay. Throw so, it to me and I woe. Go ahead, throw it. Ooh, throw it back. <sighs> oh, that's amazing. Anyway, so my dad, let's get serious. <laughs> So I can't really remember how old I was. It's actually really difficult to remember my age. I just know I was single digit. The way my child mind remembers it is that I was, I hung out with my dad like maybe a day or a few days prior to this happening. We hung out all day, went to the store. I remember like we were at the store and um, he was singing. And I remember, this is like my final memory of like my dad for what happened, what I'm going to explain. He was like singing in the store, and my father could sing really well. It's kind of where I get my singing from. And I remember being embarrassed and telling him to like stop singing in the store. And he bought me a bunch of snacks because food is life. Um, and we then he dropped me off at my grandmother's house. And that was, in my mind, that was my last memory before I found out that my father had been in an accident. It was pretty much wrong place, wrong time scenario um, that left him with brain damage. And um, so my father pretty much, I really don't know how to explain it. It's really hard. But the best way I've ever explained it is that, I mean, he has severe brain damage. He's on a lot of medications. He's, uh, he has seizures and it's, it, it's really difficult. But I guess he behaves like what age it's like a child like whatever happened to him messed him messed his brain up to the point where he kind of went back to young For i sure. guess and of course for me being his daughter i look exactly like my father he was very he was a very active father um and that happening and suddenly like my father is on essentially like he's still alive let me keep let me be clear about that like he was in an accident that should have killed him and the miracle is that he's still alive but there's repercussions from that and I remember after that happened I went to see him in the hospital it was really traumatic as a child and I kind of just stopped communicating with my dad because I couldn't take it I remember emotionally it was just too much for me and I just didn't want to see him. I didn't want to talk to him because it just made me sad for like days at a time whenever I saw him. Um, and uh, I didn't even emotionally deal with it until my senior year of high school. And this is at least 10 years after the event actually happened. I remember my senior year, I knew that my father would come to all, you know, it's your senior year, you graduate, I, I went to a performing arts high school, so I had a lot of performances, and I knew he would come, and I was scared that if people saw my father, they would make fun of him, and so I stood up in front of my class and explained my father's situation, and just begged everyone, if you see him, please don't make fun of him, and I broke down crying, and that was the very beginning of me dealing with the emotions after like over 10 years of stuffing it, of actually dealing with the brokenness that resulted after my father being in that accident. But anyway, back to what Manny was saying, it's like I, I dated guys, of course, and you know, I kind of would eventually tell them about it and every guy that I was in a relationship with would be like, wow, that really sucks, I'm so sorry. And that would be the extent of our conversation. And Manny was the first person who challenged me to communicate with my father um, and to have a relationship with him and to heal and that was huge for me like it meant more to me than I knew it it would you know someone's your spouse when they just have a supernatural grace for whatever it is that is your heart thing and your life. and I of course I didn't know that the guys that Tia had dated in the past were clueless when it came to like how to address your dad situation I just felt like I had a grace for it. Like, I just had a grace 
for being able to talk about it with you. And I feel like you had grace for me because you love my dad. I do. And I mean, you, I feel like people kind of know your dad's story, right? Oh, you always man. touch on it. I talk about my dad all the time, but when we first met, I didn't necessarily love my dad. Like, I was going through... I would have never been able to tell that you didn't love him. I was just embarking on... You met me in... Post YWAM. Post YWAM. So I had just forgiven my dad. Yeah. So, I mean, I was months from just had forgiven my dad. But it's like my dad was on drugs for most of my life. My dad got hooked on cocaine about when I was six months old. My dad took me to a crack house for the first time when I was five years old. I mean, my dad, me and my dad have just had a journey, okay? And from the time you met my dad, my dad relapsed. I remember when you first met my father, my dad was living with us, and then my parents split up. My dad relapsed. My dad relapsed multiple times. I was gonna say that something cool that Manny actually said, and this is kind of dad, mom ish, whatever. On Sunday, Manny was saying that, um, you know, he had to plan Father's Day for our church this year. Like, completely spearhead Father's Day. And actually, this year, I had to completely spearhead Mother's Day. And uh, it was so funny because I remember planning Mother's Day and making, getting everything together and decorating and handing out flowers to moms and cards. I remember thinking, this is sad. I remember, I remember planning for Mother's Day and only seeing sadness um, because, I mean, I feel like you guys know that we want to be parents. Um, and it's so interesting that I had to plan Mother's Day and he had to plan Father's Day this sure. year. And I was just only sad the whole time. And it's so interesting because on Sunday, Manny said that he, while he was planning Father's Day, he saw it as a seed. Like, a seed. And I'm like, I just remember hearing him say that, like, I'm sowing into where I'm going. So yes, I'm planning Father's Day, but I'm blessing all these fathers because I'm going to be a father one day. And I remember thinking, like, dang, I wasn't thinking that way at all about Mother's Day. Um, I was only thinking of it as, like, this cloud over my head. Like, it's so ironic that I have to plan Mother's Day when this is my third Mother's Day not being a mother. I remember just Mother's Day being frustrating for me, but, you know, still genuinely celebrating moms, but just in the back of my mind, it's frustrating. And just to see Manny just completely see Father's Day and totally different than me, it's just, it's just challenging me to, like, I don't know, be more like that. Like, I didn't think of Mother's Day as a seed, as sowing seeds into where I'm going. And now I'm like, well, I did. Even you though totally I didn't did. think about that, I did. I was sowing. God is not a liar. Like, I will not sow something and not reap it. Like, that whatever I sow, like, man, I may sow in tears, but I'm going to reap in gladness. Just to encourage everyone, you know, childhood trauma and broken families and, you know, it's not... It doesn't have to be the end all be all. It doesn't have to define who exactly. you are. Exactly. You can literally be the person who says it stops with me. Yeah. You can change the whole trajectory of your family line. Yeah. And the only reason we're even able to do this is because of Jesus, okay? Yeah. Because I think that's the that is the yeah. message. Knowing Christ completely opens up my mind to what family could be. I think sometimes the moment you think that your family dictates your destiny more than God dictates your destiny, your family just became an idol. So, so your the moment you say, "Well, I can never do that because of who my dad was or who my mother was," nothing is more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing. And the moment that something becomes more powerful in terms of dictating your destiny is the moment that's why you can't move on because you've relegated that thing to the place of God and, and my father was a was a drug addict my fa my family background is jacked up but my dad is not God God is God and God is the only God in my life and God is the game changer 
the moment you insert God into a scenario, God is the game changer. Yeah. All hey, right, I'm gonna throw subscribe. you. I'm gonna throw you the thing. Okay. You have to catch it. Oh my bad. All right, throw it back. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, now come to me. All right, throw it back. Perfect.